Okay. It works out good tonight, and I'm off tomorrow, so this will be probably better. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, I just just want to ask you some basic questions, I guess, you know, and uh, we'll, we'll try to get it as quick as we can. <laughs> that sounds time. fair enough. I'm going to do a little intro, and then, I'll, then we'll start the interview, all right? Okay, sounds good. All right. Hey, everybody, this is uh, Frankie Slotson, and welcome to another edition of the Frankie Slotson Show. And for all you people who watch my show that are local people that watch the show around the uh, northwestern Minnesota area, you will recognize this next voice. Uh, he is the local news anchor for KVLY, uh, who took over for Tom Chemansky, Mr. Hutch Johnson. How are you doing? Good, Frankie. How are you tonight? I'm doing all right. Uh, uh, cold out, cold night out tonight, huh? You know what? It's a little chilly, but nothing we're not accustomed to out here. So it's perfect hockey weather. <laughs> yeah, hockey re- weather, uh, wrestling weather, and uh, just not football weather. <laughs> no, not football, unless you're uh, watching the pros play. But they're almost all in domes this time of year, anyway. So, so uh, uh, how how uh, how did you get started with uh, doing the the weather and everything like that? Oh, I was a weather nut from a young age. Uh, I grew up in Billings, Montana. My town had a tornado warning. I saw a funnel cloud above my house. It never did touch down, but from that time on, I was hooked. And I was always pretty good at the math and science in school. And, uh, you know, I just enjoyed reading and learning more about the weather. And from that time on, after uh, going through high school and then college for the meteorology program, it's it's been a perfect fit. So. So do you ever watch, like, the Weather Channel for advice at all or information, or or what's your source? Well, I'll tell you what. When I first started out, I used to watch the Weather Channel a lot just because they give more information more frequently for, you know, weather people who want it on the go. Uh, But I I, I would say now uh, we have such great amounts of technology in the station. Our weather computers and satellite and Internet links can uh, hook me up with all the weather information that can keep me out of trouble all night long. So... Uh, Literally, uh, our little uh, uh, brand-new high-definition studios out here have all the data that I'll need uh, to to get the important information out to air right away. So has weather or has uh, being a meteorologist something you've always wanted to do, or or were there other jobs that you wanted to do, too? Well, I'll tell you what. I'm a huge uh, sports fan, and I've always been a Denver Bronco fan growing up, and... uh, uh, when I was going to college, I was asked by one of my instructors in the broadcasting classes if I wanted an internship with the Denver Broncos, and I had to really bite my tongue and think hard about that one. Uh, so I guess, you know, I had a hankering to talk. As you watch me on TV, you know I like to talk a lot. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I talk too fast. <laughs> <but no. laughs> oh, that's okay. Um, yeah, so so I, I, I just found a job that fits me to a T, and not only that, I get to talk about something I... You know, have expertise in and enjoy talking about, and plus, I get to go out and visit people in the community, go talk to area school kids, and just get out and about. So, I, I really found something that that fits well. So, have you ever been to like anywhere closer to Greenbush at all, like for like to visit <laughs> a school at all or anything? Or many weather? many times, I've been up to Roseau County, including through Greenbush and you know Badger, and on my way up to Roseau, I have a couple of hockey players. So, we've been up and down that road many times to the. The good old uh, uh, arena is at the Memorial Arena out there in Roseau. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I've got a chance to visit with some of the folks out there watching hockey. And you know what? It's beautiful country, and, and I love to get out that way. Well, that, well, that's cool. You know, yeah, this is kind of a beautiful area. Too bad there aren't no, uh, no mountains around here like there were in uh, Montana anyway. <laughs> well, the terrain is a little flatter out here, but that doesn't make the, uh, the weather any less interesting. That's for sure. So what's the what's the the best forecast you've ever had to uh, to announce, and what's the worst forecast you ever had to announce for our area? You know, I, th- I think uh, when we're talking the best, uh, I am a huge fan of sunny and warm weather in the summer. Sure. Uh, so I could take that all day long. However, as a meteorologist, I'm more interested in the you know the storms. That's what we study. That's what yeah. we try to learn more about. So I would say any time we have a storm moving through here, I can uh, not pick a lot of uh, days that that I would call good. I I would just say that any time a storm is moving through, it gets us meteorologists' blood flowing uh, because the atmosphere is very hard to predict to a T, and we do our best every time, and then after it's all done... And, you know, the game is over. We look over our playbook and see what we can do different next time. So, so that's what I'd say. 
Uh, as far as the worst goes, though, that's pretty easy. Uh, June 17th of uh, uh, 2010, when we had the tornado outbreak in the uh, uh, Wadena area, oh, and sure. then not too far from you guys, uh, up in uh, Polk County and, and uh, Grand Forks County in the North Dakota side, uh, a number of tornadoes. And that was a you know kind of a bad day because the storms were so bad and so damaging. It was good in the sense that there weren't a whole lot of casualties there were certainly some uh mentor man lost his life up there at the filling station yeah and, i remember that yeah yeah and, and so so those kind of things uh, give us a, a little bit of of time to sit back and say you know we do this job for a reason sometimes the weather can get pretty dangerous out there even though we are northern plains people we know how to deal with the cold uh, thunderstorms happen all the time there still are those occasions where uh, in a moment's notice, uh, our lives could be at risk. So it's it's important, and that keeps me going too. Yeah, and it's kind of kind of nice that we don't have to deal with like volcanoes or earthquakes or anything <laughs> like that, or even hurricanes. But I but I've heard in certain areas, even close to to where we are, that they've gotten a few earthquakes and stuff. And whether they're just minor earthquakes, but they're still earthquakes. I'm just like, wow, that's pretty uh, pretty intense for that to get close to home anyway. Yeah, and it's all it's all earth science, and all of it is amazing, and it all comes back to, uh, you know, how small we are compared to uh, our planet, and really, the more we can learn about it and how we can adapt to prepare for these types of events, uh, you know, there's a lot of work going into predicting earthquakes. If you think predicting the weather is hard, you know, try to ask somebody who lives in the uh, uh, the earthquake zones near California and fault oh, lines yeah. out there to predict those to a T. So, I mean, it's all interesting, and it all can help us in our, our day-to-day lives. Yeah. Well, Sean, one of the things I do enjoy about, you know, working up here in the Northern Plains is we have four seasons. So, you know, we can have that weather be in the 90s or 100s in the summer. We can't can have thunderstorms. Well, we have winter weather. Uh, we have a nice fall and spring as well. So it keeps us hopping all year long. I'd much rather be working up here than uh, basically videotape my forecast on Monday and go golfing the rest of the week. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, I, I hear you there. And, and yeah, you are lucky because, you, know, you know, this area, I mean, we are all lucky when it comes to the four seasons. I'm just I'm just so surprised that we haven't had, like in Greenbush, you know, I've, I've pretty much lived around this area most of my life anyway, and every time we'd get like a tornado warning or anything like that around our area, it seems like it would never, not that I wanted to hit the area at all, but it seemed like it, it would never come cl- that close to hit Greenbush at all, you know? Yeah. You need to think of those tornadoes as a needle in a haystack. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> I think it's one of these things that, that it really can get a community or or a region kind of lax on, well, you know what, we've had a lot of tornado warnings and nothing ever hits us, but tornadoes affect a very small area. Think of a county the size of Roseau County, a big county, and the average tornado is only about 10 miles wide, sits on the ground for maybe a mile in distance and only a minute to two minutes long. Uh, Some of them are more long-lived than that, but essentially the chances of that hitting your neighborhood, your town, your community, very small. As long as people know what to do, and uh, we're here to let people know when the chances are better for storms like that to hit, then I think we cover as many bases as we can. But unfortunately, we have daily lives, daily activities, taking our kids to hockey games or Uh or heading out hunting, and we don't have that weather uh, right next to us all the time. So so sometimes, uh, unfortunately, we get caught off guard. Yeah, and to me, I think the last time we ever had a a major, like, as far as I remember anyway, a tornado that was real close to the area was when it hit Badger, like, the outskirts of Badger, like, I think in, like, 97 or 98 before you were even here. And, right. uh, yeah, I mean, that just... I'm thankful that we've never had any uh, severe damage besides uh, last year and, and probably the year before that with uh, in 2011 with the, uh, the wind storms that we had. Yeah, and that's one thing I was going to mention in driving up there. You can still see in a lot of the, uh, the, the, the brush and the trees a lot of trees snapped in half out there in Roseau County from oh, the yeah. windstorms. And, and so when you hear us talking on TV about a severe thunderstorm warning, you, you might take a sigh of relief and say, oh, good, it's not going to be dangerous. But those storms can have straight-line winds over 100 miles per hour. Those break trees, they fall on houses, they fall on cars. So uh, they can be very dangerous. 
So what do you think about uh, global warming then? Do you think it's more of a reality or do you think it's just kind of a myth? You got the can opener up on the can of worms now, didn't you, Frankie? <laughs> I, <laughs> had to, I had to ask. You're a weather guy. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I, what Here's what I think, and, and you can take it for what it's worth, and I'm not going to sit on the middle of the fence. I'm going to say I've been forecasting weather for a lot of years, and we have a lot to learn about getting the forecast right for two or three days ahead of time or seven days ahead of time. Now, I respect a lot of my colleagues that work in climatology that do their very best to forecast what the weather's going to be like next season, next month, or 10 years from now. But I find it hard to believe that any computer model that we have can be real successful in predicting to a high degree of accuracy what's going to happen over the next 25 or 50 years. Yes, we can maybe get some trends together, but I just don't know that I, I put a lot of weight in that. So, um you know, we live in a planet that's had a, a changing climate since day one. It, it changes all the time. Oh, yeah. Do we as people have an impact? You know what? We probably do have some impact on the planet's weather and the planet's climate. But I do think that there are a lot of factors that we don't take into account or we don't know how to take into account, like uh, solar cycles and, uh, you know, varying uh, snow versus land versus water ratios and the fact that we have a lot more cities now that are built out of concrete and asphalt and a lot of our temperature data comes from those cities so i find arguments on both sides of the global warming uh, argument in intriguing and interesting but as on a personal level and with my meteorological day-to-day weather experience i find it real hard to believe that we can with any accuracy uh, you know predict what's going to happen over the next 50 years when we have a hard time seeing what's happening in two weeks or, or, or three months from now. Especially with those people who think that the world was going to end back on uh, the 21st of December. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sure uh, makes for good headlines. <laughs> yeah, I tell you that much. So what was it like when you first started uh, uh, for KVLY after, you know, now filling the shoes, the big shoes for Tom Shemaski? Because he, <laughs> you know, he's been, the, as far as I can remember since I was a little kid, uh, he was uh, the one-man guy that I remember we're watching for the forecast. Well, Tom, Tom did a lot of good work around here, and uh, I always knew coming in to, to work, you know, behind someone like that was going to be big shoes to fill, to sure. be perfectly honest with you. But in my opinion, you can't worry about that. You just come in and do your best. So I got to say, the folks here at Valley News Live, KX, JB, and KVOY, you know, had open arms. They're a great group of people to, to work with, and they let me go to work. And that included getting to know the intricacies of the weather here on the eastern side of North Dakota and western Minnesota compared to what I've been used to forecasting for the previous 10 years out in central North Dakota and Bismarck. And oh, you'd yeah. be surprised how different it is. Oh, yeah. So. Oh, no, that, that's cool. And, and, you know, I tell you, I'm sure uh, the, the people who watch you are are pretty... Actually, I'm pretty. I think they're pretty impressed by by all the stuff that you know because you're a young guy, you know, and and you you take your job very seriously, and you try to be a professional as well. But then you try to have fun with the weather. You you kind of remind me of uh, Bill Murray when he was uh, played the weather guy <laughs> in uh, Groundhog Day. I'm sure you knew that uh, reference. Huh? <laughs> I, I saw that movie one time or twice. Yeah, uh, maybe maybe it was on replay. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I appreciate the kind words, yeah. Sean. And I got to tell you that. Uh, you know, like I said, it's a job that fits me to a T. And if you were to meet me on the streets of Greenbush or Rozo at the hockey game, I, I am like I am on TV. That's me. I don't try to put on a face for TV. <laughs> I am just, uh, you know, when w- sometimes our weather can be benign in the same way day after day for weeks on end. Sure. And it's it's fun to, to have a little fun with the weather from time to time and with my coworkers. But at the same time, there's days when the weather is absolutely serious and it'll impact your day it'll impact whether or not the crop is going to grow or the fires are going to spread so i do have to take those things into account and when it's serious we we get down to business here because we know uh, one of the things i feel fortunate about is we work and live in an area where people really do place their livelihoods on what happens with the weather whether you work in the the tourism industry and you're relying on people to come up and visit lake of the woods oh, yeah. or you're an agriculture person or you want to go hunting that so many people care and know a lot about the weather up here so that's why i think 
the patience is more from the viewers. They have that appetite for more weather information. Well, I tell you what there, Hutch, I, I appreciate the, you let, giving me the time to interview you. I know you're such a busy guy, but it was such an honor to talk to you, and hopefully we do get to meet one day. That would be kind of cool. <laughs> It, it would, yeah. I'm, I'm sure I'll be up at the rink from time to time over the next few years, so uh, when I'm coming through, maybe I'll have to let you know when that is. But, yeah. uh, Sean, thanks for the invitation. It's good to talk to you and uh, not to all the people up there in northwest Minnesota. Hey, you're not forgotten. You're on our weather maps, and uh, we like to keep our eyes open for what's happening up there, too. <laughs> all right, man. Well, thank you very much, and uh, you have a good rest of the evening. We'll be watching the forecast tonight. <laughs> yeah, Happy New Year to you and to everyone else. That's right. Have a good night, man. Bye. And that was Hutch Johnson, uh, our local, uh, one of the local meteorologists that we have uh, for, uh, well, a lot of people who watch my YouTube channel probably don't know, but if there's anybody locally that knows, uh, it's on our cable box. Anyway, or I'm not too sure what channel would be on satellite dish. I think it's the same on satellite as it is on cable. Who knows? But anyway, uh, very nice to talk to Hutch Johnson, the meteorologist from KVLY out of Fargo, North Dakota. Uh, the second anchor I've ever talked to. Uh, if you guys remember, go back and check out the Terry Doolum interview that I did when, when my buddy Mike and I went down to Grand Forks and we went to Channel 8, WDAZ ch- Channel 8 to Studios back in September and interviewed a guy who's been around the WDAZ for damn near forever, uh, Terry Doolum, and uh, we had a fun time t- chat with him. So, I tell you what, uh, interviews keep on coming and coming and coming. This is the new format. Get used to it. Uh, videos, you know, I'll, I'll try to make some videos here and there, but my main focus now, and maybe eventually I'll make a, a separate channel based where I can put all these interviews on, but for right now, this is the new format for what I'm ch- choosing to do as far as my next venture on YouTube. So, Hope you guys like it and pass it around. Anyway.